Hi, I'm Joe, a Warsaw-based shooting instructor. In today's video, I'm going to discuss some of my experiences of using and maintaining my K98K Mauser rifle, as well as some of the problems I've encountered and how I've dealt with them. When I first got the rifle, it was, shall we say, fresh out of long-term military storage and required a thorough cleaning and inspection before I was confident it was safe to take to the range. In this video, I'll take you through some of the work that was done to the rifle when it was reactivated, starting with how the stock was degreased from all the cosmoline and refinished with boiled linseed oil, and I'll also show you how to check the head spacing of the rifle. Next, I'll talk about some of the issues I've had with this rifle, including a problem with the magazine floor plate and an as yet unresolved shift in the rifle's point of impact. I'll also show you a driver bit I made to remove the nuts holding the grip panels on the Mauser bayonet and talk about repairs I made to the blade. Finally, I'd also like to share some of my experiences with shooting some common brands of commercial ammunition, so stay tuned. When I first got this rifle, and wait till I tell you the story about that day, it was fresh out of storage, with every possible crevice completely filled with cosmoline. It took me a few days to scrub it all out. Anyhow, the wood had also absorbed a fair bit of cosmoline, so I sent it to a friend to degrease. He used the whiting method to get a lot of the grease out, and I've linked to a video in the description that demonstrates this process. After the stock was degreased, it was treated with boiled linseed oil, and after its initial treatment, I try to oil the stock about once a year. Boiled linseed oil is an unusual substance and needs to be handled with care. It generates heat as it dries, so if you have any rags soaked in it, you need to take precautions to make sure that the rag does not spontaneously combust from the reaction of the oil. When applying the oil to the stock, place the smallest possible drop on the wood and spread it around with your finger. Be careful not to apply too much as it won't dry afterwards. After coating, I let the stock dry for a day or so before reassembling the rifle. And you can see how much coverage you can get out of just one drop. You should always check the head spacing on a newly acquired rifle. To check the head spacing on a Mauser, strip the bolt so that it's just the bolt body, and the extractor. You can use a snap cap as a poor man's go gauge. And here's what that looks like. The bolt closes with no force required. Next, I'll try my 8x57 Mauser no-go gauge. And this time, when I close the bolt, 
it stops, does not close all the way. Do not put any extra force on that bolt handle. So this rifle passes the headspace check. When I first got the rifle, the floor plate seemed to be jammed into the trigger guard. Judging by all the gouges in the trigger guard, this was not a new problem. After I was able to get it out, it wouldn't stay in place and would just pop out. Long story short, I discovered that the floor plate was slightly bowed by checking with the edge of a square. To fix the problem, I simply straighten the floor plate by hand, and now it works perfectly. One day, during a session at the range a few years ago, my Mauser inexplicably seemed to experience a point of impact change midway through the session, which has persisted with the rifle ever since. Here are some photos of my targets at 100 meters that day that show the shift. This change is visible even at 50 yards. When I first got the rifle, windage was dead center, but ever since this shift, it now consistently shoots high and to the right. The performance at 200 meters is just awful. It'll hit the guy next to the guy you're aiming at. While this is currently an unresolved problem that requires some additional testing on my part, now that I've been reunited with the rifle after five years, the leading theory is that something happened to the recoil lug in the stock. Checking the recoil lug now, it seems to be okay, but while looking through my archives, I notice that the nut holding the recoil lug in place appears to have rotated, but I can't establish when this happened in order to correlate it with the emergence of the shift in point of impact. When I first got this bayonet, another graduate of the Yugoslav refurbishment program, made with parts from perhaps a hundred different bayonets, the tip looked more like a flathead screwdriver. But I noticed these blades seem to be made of softer or maybe just unhardened steel compared to what you find on typical knives, and so I was able to restore the point using just a regular file. As far as I understand, the edges on these were never sharpened, and I don't imagine that with what seems like such soft steel, they would hold much of an edge if being used for Fieldcraft, for example. Also, here's a driver bit I made out of a bolt to fit the nuts that hold the grip panels in place. And on the scabbard, I just have a replica bayonet frog. When I first started shooting this rifle, I was using exclusively PPU's 8mm Mauser ammo. Note that PPU produces two versions of the 7.92x57 cartridge, one with 8mm Mauser on the head stamp and the other with 8x57JS. Unfortunately, I was never able to get my hands on any of the PPU 8x57JS ammo for comparison. Checking the specs on the PPU website, you'll see that the 8mm Mauser has significantly lower velocity than the corresponding 8x57JS ammo. 
As a result, the point of impact was ridiculously low, and it took a few sessions to figure out what kind of hold I needed just to get on paper. I ended up setting the sights to something like the 400 meter setting to line up the point of impact with the point of aim at 100 meters. Later on, I switched to the S&B 8x57JS ammo, which is significantly more hotly loaded than the PPU 8mm Mauser, and perhaps even more hotly loaded than World War II service ammo. Of course, the uh, point of impact is now much higher than the point of aim. I've included some specifications for the PPU and S&B loads, as well as the specs for the World War II German SS Patrol. Now, some companies have produced intentionally underloaded 8mm Mauser ammunition, and the reason for this has to do with the change of specifications for the 8x57 cartridge. Originally, the bullet diameter was 0.318 of an inch, but in the late 1800s, that was changed to 0.323. And while this change came into effect more than a century ago, there is a historical concern that someone might use modern .323 ammunition in a rifle chambered for the historical .318 projectile, which could lead to a catastrophic failure of the rifle, injury, and most importantly, legal liability. I hope that some of the information in this video will be of use in enjoying and keeping your own Mauser in service. In my next video, I'll give a short introduction to German and Yugoslav cleaning kits and slings, so be sure to like, share, and subscribe, check out my Mauser K98K M98 playlist, and follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash survivewithjoe. Thanks for watching.